Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, Stacking Ohana. This is Aloha Stacker, and welcome back to the channel. And today, I want to say thank you so much. We got to 650 subscribers, so let's shoot for our next goal, and let's get to seven. Let's try to get to 700 before the end of January. In this episode, we're going to be talking about our Week Nine uh, ten dollar a week challenge. So, and this is a really cool story with a really really cool item. So, please pay a lot of attention to it and stick around and watch that. And then we also are going to be talking about, I got some new lever tods, so to add to the collection. So I've got some new years that I don't have and some other things. Oh, just, there's some really cool stuff here. So please stand by for that. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about the 500 subscriber guys. Since we're way past 500, we're going to push that probably to sometime in the beginning of the year. Let me go ahead and zoom us in a little bit so we can talk about the 500 subscriber guy. So as you know... My number one prize is this number three of my channel round. And the channel round looks like this. It's going, it's not an antiqued one, it's the original one, and it looks just like this with the back, with the hibiscus leaves on the back. So that will be the number one prize. And remember, these are for sale on Silver Smith Shields website. There'll be a link in the description. This is the antique version. And you can go to his website and I'm selling these at cost. I'm not making any money off these. My goal is just to have fun with the community and all the fans and friends, and hopefully we can uh do these kind of things together because it's really neat. And the uh, so the, the second prize is going to be this gift from Silver Nitrate. So he's donating this this and when I do the draw, I'll open it so whoever that winner is will know what it is. And then last after last video and I like I said every video now I'm going to add something new until we get there. So I got a few things to add so we got a few videos to go. But this this will be another prize that was added. It was a half ounce tiger shark from Australia. So for this video, this is what we're going to add. We're going to add a Canadian silver dollar from 1966, and it's the one with the canoe on it. So take a look at that. Very nice. So that has now been added to the stack for the gaw. So in the next video, we'll add another one. So And we'll just keep it going until the time to draw is. And I'm gonna try, I think I'm going to push it till after Mad Stackers. That way we're not competing against each other for gaw time. Uh, let's go ahead. So I talked about the channel rounds. I talked about the, uh, the gaw. So let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to move some stuff out of the way so we can go ahead and get started on the things we're going to talk about in this video. I have a couple pieces of channel mail I'd like to, to show off really quick. And the first one is from, it was a very beautiful Christmas card and some stickers. And this is from Gina R. And she, and she put, heartfelt wishes for a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. Wishing your family a delightful Christmas and a happy new year, Gina R. Thank you so much. And, and she sent me these really, really cool stickers. So I really appreciate that. These are great. Check her channel out. That is very nice. Next, we got a, another Christmas card from a good friend of mine. And Merry Christmas. And that's cool because it looks a lot like my, my Noel Farms truck. <laughs> so pretty cool. And this is from my good friend, Aloha and family. Best wishes, best wishes for a holiday, for a wonderful holiday that bring fond memories and last a lifetime. Meli Kaliki Maka, Merry Christmas in Hawaiian. Hope you and the family have a wonderful holiday, Patriot Stacker. And Patriot Stacker and I started pretty close to around the same time, and we have been, uh, and we have so much in common, and a lot of our videos talk about the same things, and it's really cool that him and I have so much in common. Look at this, look at that. That is such a cool sticker, look at that. And you know, he's got one of the coolest looking logos out of everybody in our little community. It's just so neat. So thank you very much, Patriot Stacker. I wish the same to you. Merry Christmas and happy holidays to you. Very cool. Now we're going to go ahead and move on and talk about my, my friend Pirate Stacker. Now, as you know, Pirate Stacker just got his channel round, and he had the Rat Stack make him the round, and it's a very, very awesome round. But guess what? I got one because I provided the silver for this. So I got my Certificate of Authenticity for the Pirate Stacker channel round 2020, 99 fine silver, 1.357 troy ounces, and I got the number five round. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. Look at that. Now you've seen this on his channel, but you haven't seen this one. This one is mine. Look at the detail. It's just phenomenal. Way to go, Ratstack. This is just such a fantastic channel round. And you got the pieces of eight on the back too. I think this is by far the best channel round I have ever seen for any channel on YouTube so far. Now that doesn't mean that people won't come up with better ones later. I mean, I, this is better than my channel round. I mean, I, hands down. My channel round's cool, but his channel round is epic. So, by comparison, yes. But, you know, that's cool. I mean, I'm totally happy. I love this channel round. I think it's so cool. 
I mean, there's so much detail and so much work in this. I mean, it's just it's just phenomenal. I love this. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, Radstack. Thank you so much, Pirate Stacker, for giving me the opportunity to get one of these. And uh, it was cool that I got to provide the silver and be a big part of the fact that you got this. So, very cool. I love this community. love the fact that I can be a part of so much neat stuff. So, moving on to that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the challenge. Now, I've got to show you this. i got to show you this coin that I got for my Week 9 challenge. This is really, really neat, and it comes with a very, very cool story. Actually, let me show you the story first. So, USS, U.S. Frigate Constellation, 1797. Souvenir medal struck from Navy's first ship. Good for a lifetime admission to the frigate. Thousands of special copper medals, newly minted for, from parts of the United States Frigate Constellation, now birthed in Baltimore, will provide lifetime free admission to the Navy's oldest vessel for the fortunate owners. The medals were struck from copper spikes used in the original construction of the ship in Baltimore in 1797, are being used, and they were used to raise funds for the restoration, and each dollar provided was helping out. So I got one of these. Look at this. USS Frigate Constellation. Let's see if I can, how detailed we can get. Actually, you know what? Let's go and get a zoom out just a tad and see if we can get a little bit more clarity on this. Eh, not so much. Actually, we'll just zoom back in. Okay, cool. And then on the, on the other side, it says, This coin struck from parts of the Frigate Const Constellation, the first ship of the United States Navy. Now, something really interesting about this, because the plot does thicken on this, on this, because after this, this was made in 1955, by the way, and uh, a lot of uh, researchers looked into this afterwards because they, were, they weren't sure that this came from the original ship. So, I have a really cool article that I'm going to read to everybody. Let me go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Let me see if that, uh, well, that doesn't really help, so we'll zoom back in just for the fun of it. Okay, so we're going to put this coin right here. So I have this article I want to read to you because the plot does thicken on this. And this article comes from Coin World in August 2nd, 2012. So and it says, Research Matters, 1955's metal claim of origin inaccurate. So this is very interesting, very inaccurate. Statement on the reverse of the metal, first issued in 1955, claims that the metal included metal recovered from the original constellation launched in 1797. Instead, the metal contains metal from the second constellation launched in 1854. So let me tell you a story that will point out the importance of doing your research before making any numismatic purchase. But first, I must give you a short history lesson. With the Naval Act of 1794, Congress created the United States Navy and authorized the construction of six frigates. The first one to put to sea was the U.S. Frigate Constellation in 1797. It was the first ship of the U.S. Navy and the first U.S. ship to engage and defeat an enemy vessel. It was decommissioned and broken up for scrap June 25, 1853 at the Gosport Navy Yard in Norfolk, Virginia. In the same yard, the construction was started on a new ship, a sloop of war, which would bear the same name. The second ship was named USS Constellation and was launched 26 August 1854. Okay, so it was the last sail-only warship built by the U.S. Navy. It was decommissioned on February 4th, 1955, and taken to its permanent berth in Baltimore's Inner Harbor. Now here's where the plot thickens. In 1955, the city of Baltimore started promoting the second ship as a rebuild of the original 1797 frigate. The city issued medals, these, and sold them for $1 each to raise money to restore the ship to the museum. On the reverse, it says this coin is struck from parts of the frigate constellation, the first ship of the U.S. Navy. The promotion caught the attention of historians, and a heated debate began. The controversy continued until 1999, when evidence was uncovered during... The restoration that conclusively proved that it was the ship was launched in 1854. What the city of Baltimore had was a sloop of war that was completely new design, built from the keel up. Its name was the only connection to the original frigate launched in 1797. Now begins the story of what happens when you don't do the research first. Recently, I stumbled upon one of the medals issued in 1955, which is one of these. After reading the notation on the reverse, I was impressed with the historical significance of the piece and bought it. Then I did research and found out the facts. I was very disappointed to say the least. There may still be some parts of the 1797 Frigate Constellation that have survived in some other form or another, but none of them are in the metal that I purchased. Had I done the research first, I would not have bought the item, but now that I have the metal, it does make an interesting story. The bottom line is, I didn't know what I had, but then neither did the city of Baltimore. The promotion claim was not an outright lie, as would imply in the intent to defraud. It was a case on not doing research, the same thing I am guilty of. The whole incident reminds me of the master confusion, Christopher Columbus. When he started sailing west across the Atlantic, he did not know where he was going. When he got there, he did not know where he was. And when he got back to Europe, he did not know where he had been. So this article was written by Richard Graft, and he is a numicist living in Oregon who's been collecting coins for more than 50 years. So this is a really cool story. But, in, you know, to be honest, in my personal opinion, I don't care. 
This coin cost me less than $6, and then I paid another like $4 and some change for shipping. So this is my $10 a week coin, and it has an awesome history. It's parts of the ship from the second constellation from 1854, which is totally fine by me, because I'm in the Navy. I love U.S. history. Uh, this is real Americana here either way, and it comes with a really cool story. So how many coins can you say, or medals, can you say come with a really awesome story? So here's this is a copy of the original article that I printed, the coin, and then the article from Coin World from August 2012. I get to keep this forever as part of something really cool, and I got to make a video and share the whole thing with you. So I am, I think that is so cool. Uh, I mean, I don't know how often I'm gonna find really cool items and treasures like this, but I think it's super, 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 super exciting. Okay, so that's finished. Let's go ahead and move on to something else. Next, I had uh, won an auction for, from JCS Coin. And as all you know, I love my, my old US history, my Americana, my North America, South America, doesn't matter. But I got myself a Dos Royale for 1830. So let me go ahead and pull this out and get you a better look at it. And then we'll talk about the coin just a little bit. I don't have too much to say on it because I can't get that much info. I wasn't able to get a mintage on it. So, but here we go. We have ourselves a Dos Royale with Ferdinand VII from 1830. This is my first, or I think it's my, is it my second Dos Royale? Let me see, which one is this? The Cazador one is, let's see. Okay, so this is also a Dos Royale. So it's not my, it's my second Dos Royale, but this one is definitely not, this one is a different vintage, and I'll tell you, and I'll explain why. So on the, on the, on the reverse, we got the, the crown Spanish shield, right? And this says R for Real, two for Dos for two Real. Let's see if I can block some of this, and make it maybe a little bit clear. And then, uh, so then we have, uh, right here is an S, which stands for Seville or Sevilla, the mint. So this was, this coin was actually made in Spain and uh, JB, which are the initials of the engraver. And you got the Spanish crown and a Ferdinand VII on the front with the, year, with the year on the bottom. Now this coin was used in the New World. I don't obviously don't know the history of it specifically. I think it's really cool that it's from 1830, so it probably has an amazing history that goes with it. But uh, when I was doing some research on this, I did find that these coins were used in the New World in Cuba. Cuba's, uh, these the ones with this engraver's name I saw in uh, auctions that were from coins found in Cuba. So, you know, these coins made it all around the world. So there's no, you never know, it doesn't matter where it was minted. I know they were, mint, they were minted all over the New World, but this one specifically was minted in Spain. And who knows where it's been and who knows what it's seen. But the thought of all those cool ideas really excites me. I love, I love to know, I love the history. And I always just curious who's held this coin, where it's been and what it's done. And I was able to acquire this from our friends over at JCS Gold. Uh, a little plug for them. So, very cool. Moving on. Next, we're going to go ahead and slide over to some new Libertads, which you know are my favorite. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, I did a trade with my friend CG, CG, CGB Coins, Matt. And some of you know his channel, and I'll plug it in here, and I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he sent me this note because he doesn't have any stickers yet, and he said, Aloha. Thanks for trading with me. What I lack in cool stickers I make for with ridiculous packaging, I'll get my stuff together someday, CGB Coins Matt. Well, Matt is a really cool man, cool, is a really cool guy, and he does this artificial toning, and I saw in one of his videos that he artificially toned a Libertad. So I was like, hey, I'll trade you for it, because you know I like Libertads, but he also sent along, first I'm gonna show you this thing, what he sent along uh, with him, because he does all this artificial toning, and it comes out fantastic. I mean, look at the coloring on this. So he sent me all these nickels, and these nickels have some really, really nice artificial toning on them. Let's see, let's bring them up close. So we got, and none of these are silver. They're just regular old, they're just regular standard nickels. But uh, look at the color. I mean, if you can see it. I, I don't know how hard it is to see in the camera. It's, it's kind of hard for me to see while I'm looking in the camera, but I, but they came out wonderful. I mean, they're the, the rainbowish color that's in them, very nice. So thank you for that, Matt. But let's go ahead and get to the good stuff. Let's show off the Libertad. And this is from 2016. So not a rare year, which is good. So he didn't, he didn't tarnish a Libertad that's rare. It's actually one of the highest minted Libertads. I think this one, let me see, this one has 1,437,500 mintage. It's, I think, one of the highest minted years ever. But look at the toning that came out on this. This is just amazing. So of course I'm going to take it, you know, I'm a Libertad, I'm a Libertad fan. And if you're going to artificially tone a Libertad, and then you want to trade for it, I'm game. I am game. And plus now I get to touch it and enjoy it because... Shoot, it's been tarnished, so I don't care. But look at that, look at the coloring on that. And tell me, that's just not neat. You know, some people might not like that you do this to coins, but I don't, I don't care, I like it. It's already been done, so I'm willing to take it. So that is that is pretty neat. So thank you very much, Matt, I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure doing that. And I traded him, uh, I actually traded him two of these, actually. He got, he got himself two of these uh, 50 cent Australian tiger sharks. 
And uh, and I got a Tone Libertad, so we both win. He gets some new cool coins, and maybe he'll Tone one. I don't know. Uh, but I got I got this, so I'm pretty excited. And and I already have this year in a normal Libertad, so now... And this one I'm put on display. It's going to be on display in the back now because it's just, just that nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to... Okay, so I did a... So Silver Wolf is a... Uh, he does uh, auctions on, e on, uh, in on Instagram. And this was my first purchase from him. So here's his cool sticker, which is really, really cool. And our friend Silver Wolf is from Puerto Rico. So Richport. So that is an awesome sticker. And he had a couple of years on his auction that I did not have yet. So I had the opportunity to acquire them. And I'm very glad I did because I needed them for my collection. And the first one we got was a 2000. So now I own the 2000 Libertad. Oh, it's got a sticker on the back, but I'll, I'll remove that later. No, no big deal. So 2000, I don't own that in my, I now have that year. And I also was able to get a 2003. So two more years. Now the 2000 has a mintage of 396,400 and this year has a mintage of 678,869. So not too rare. And right now I'm still pretty much collecting all the years that aren't so rare, uh, which is fine. Not a big deal. Uh, I need them. So as long as I can get the cheaper ones now, you know, stand by for the ones that are gonna be more expensive later. All right, now let me get to some good stuff. This is this. So now I've got myself another Libertad and this came from Atmex. And uh, this one only has a mintage of 1,000. And this is my first antique Libertad from 2019. 1,000 mintage, it's a five ounce chunk. And we know, we know how many of people in our community love the chunk. So here's a cool thing that we can do. Since I've got a five ounce here from 2013, that's normal. Now you can see the difference in the coloration between a normal one. I mean, you know what, let's try, to, let's try something. Let's try, to go, let's try to zoom back and see if we can get some clarity. That's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? Well, we'll zoom it. So, well, basically, we got ourselves a really nice antique. And, and, you know, you have to see these antique ones in person because it always look, antique always looks better in person. But you can tell just by the coloration that this is darker and shaded where this one is more clear. So I've got my first antique Libertad from 5 ounce 2019 with 1,000 mintage and comparing it to another one. So cool. So that one will actually move. This one will take the place of this one on the desk. So Libertad, Libertad's, Libertad's. We love them. So that's it for the Lieber Todds. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the final portion of our, what we got this week. And the first, the next thing I got was some bold precious metals. We got ourselves a Roaring Lion. Now I know I've showed this off before, but I went ahead and sent this off to somebody for something special that's coming. Uh, I'm not gonna promote that at this point because I don't want anybody to know where it went and what it's for. So. But this is the 2021 Roaring Lion. I know a lot of you have bought these because really it's amazing that you can get these for such a cheap price over spot when they only mint, they're only they only minting 150000 And this is one of the coolest and nicely designed coins I have seen. So, huh, had to get one. Next, we got ourselves a certificate of authenticity for a Germania in Colombia. I'll do a quick show of what it says. Uh, so this is, another, this is one of my few Germania coins. I've got some Fafnirs. Those are the only ones I believe I have. But this is the Columbia in Germania, five mark from 2019. It's a one ounce BU, and they only limited this to 25,000 pieces. But, you know, I got to be honest. I don't know why these haven't sold out yet. Because to be honest, this is an absolute beautiful coin. Let me see if I can, uh, let me zoom out just a tad and see if we can bring it in for some clarity. So what's, to me, the front isn't really, this is, this is the part of it that actually impresses me the most. And let me go ahead and zoom in again. I love the way that looks. That is just a very, very awesome picture. Germania 2019, you got the you got the, the shield, uh, you got the wreath. It looks like it's going around it. It says five marks. I mean, this mint does some fantastic work on their coins. I mean, the detail is just phenomenal. You know, Germania and Columbia. I mean, you, you know, you can't complain. It's a beautiful coin, 25,000 minted. And it doesn't cost that much. They still have these on bold, and they're not that expensive. So if you're interested, you know where to get it. And then last but not least, very last coin I picked up, was another Canadian coin, another two ounce chunk. And I, I you know, I gotta be honest, the, these Canadian two ounces are very cool. Look at this, it's the Twin Maple Leaf. Now there's no mintage listed for these yet, I believe because they just haven't stopped making them or they just haven't advertised them yet. And it's got, you got, you got your little privy there, which is more like a anti-defense mechanism. It's got, these have the anti-milking agent in them. So there shouldn't, they shouldn't milk spot. Now I damn, I do have on order a case for this. So 
I hate that. I wish they already came in that. I, you know, I wish these coin man, these coin vendors would just sell these already encapsulated, all of them. It would just make life so much easier. I'd pay a little bit extra just to have the capsules on all these. It just, you know, just one less thing I've got to do later. But this is neat. And you know, I like the two ounce chunks, especially from Canada. You got the Kraken. Uh, I'm trying to do a trade for the Goose. So if Anna T's listening to this, please. <laughs> I know you got two of them. <laughs> but if anybody's got an extra Canadian Goose and they want to trade with me, uh, I'm game. So please let me know. Uh, I definitely want the trade. But other than that, everybody, I really want to thank you all so much and putting up with the patience of, of going through uh, these long videos lately. I've got a lot to show off. I'm trying to wrap this up before we get to Christmas because I want to take a break for a couple weeks. I'm warning you now. Uh, after next week, I'm going to take a break for two weeks. I won't, you won't see me on YouTube. I won't be watching too many videos. I'm trying to spend some time with family and friends and really just kind of recharge my batteries and start planning for some awesome videos and content for 2021. But other than that, I want to thank you all. I want you all to have a good afternoon, a good evening, and a good morning, wherever you're at in the world. And I want to say aloha and mahalo.